I've been having a lot of thoughts on XLR cables, mostly because I've upgraded some of mine and I've tried out some higher quality ones. And the reason why I wanted to make this part two is because I've noticed a major difference in the quality and the functionality of the XLR cables that I've got. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel. I'm Justin and in this video, yes, we're talking about XLR cables and my journey in which I have upgraded my XLR cables and have noticed the difference in quality and functionality. Over this time, it's really made me realize that if you want to have something reliable, you're going to have to pay a little bit more for it. So for this video, I have four examples for you. I have two cheaper options and two more expensive options. Now, those two cheaper options are a little bit different. You have your standard Amazon basic rubbery kind of XLR cable with the standard connectors. Then you have the braided version of that, very similar in style, very similar connector, probably the same connector, which is something that I'm going to bring up with the more higher budget ones. And uh, those are your budget ones that everyone has seen. Probably everyone has bought a ton of them. Now that leads me to the more expensive ones. And one is plugged in right now, the Livewire XLR cable. I have a six foot one right now. And also the Cadillac, as they say, of XLR cables, the Mogami XLR cable here. I bought a 10 foot one of that one because I wanted to use it for my boom mic when I do jobs and I work uh, short films or whatever it is. I want to have a high quality XLR cable for when I work. Let's talk about their builds and give them a grade so that we can get an understanding of what you will encounter when you buy these things. Is it worth it to spend a little extra cash on your build quality? Because build quality is very important, especially if you're moving it around a lot. Now everyone knows when something feels cheap, it, it feels like there's something's missing. It, it, there's no body to it. There's no like structure. It's not terrible, but it doesn't feel great, especially after feeling higher quality XLR cables, which it, it, that is my basis right here. I have experienced these higher budget ones now gives me a better perspective on what I'm missing with these lower budget ones. Now with the connectors, I noticed that the locking mechanism, it feels kind of stiff and that's sometimes good, but it doesn't feel stiff in the right way. Now some redeeming qualities, the metal on the connectors are very well made and they are pretty sturdy so the plastic even is is pretty nice too and the connector is nice with the clamp here to hold the cable in place so it doesn't get yanked as easily of course if you yank hard enough I'm sure it will go so as far as this one is concerned I really do feel that it's it's good for the price you're not, I mean, when you buy these, they probably round out to be like $3 a cable. Next up, we have a very similar one. Kind of like the same exact thing, except this one is braided. And what I noticed is it's a little bit more flexible. You won't kink it as easily, but it will kink if you really try. That's why you always got to strap down your lines and make sure that you're aware of where your cables are going. And this applies for cheap and more expensive stuff, regardless of its price and regardless of its uh, application of what you're using it for. To keep it simple, really the only difference that I've noticed with these cables between the braided and the rubber cheaper ones, the clamp or like the sleeve in there the plastic is very flimsy and it's not very well made. So this will get yanked very easily. So maybe braided might be better. A lot of people swear by braided cables, but as far as the connection is concerned, not that great. Now to give a grade and a recap on those budget options, I feel that the rubber one is like a seven out of 10, maybe six out of 10. I'll go with six and a half because it's, it's just a little bit off and it feels flimsy. Same thing with the 
braided one, I give it a six and a half out of 10 because it's really not like to the quality that I'm really looking for in an XLR cable. Granted, you get what you pay for. That's just my opinion and let me know what you think down in the comments if you had experiences like this. Now let's start off with the live wire one. It's connected right now, so I'll show you in B-roll. It's really well made and the connector is so nice. I really do enjoy how they made this thing. The cable itself, you feel an actual cable. It has more heft to it and it feels more enforced and really well made. So as far as the live wire one is concerned, I really love it. It was the first higher quality XLR cable I bought and I noticed it right away. Now, taking it to a another level, not necessarily a bigger level, like massively, but another level, the Mogami XLR cable, which some considered like the best XLR cable on the market today. Just like the Livewire one, you feel like you're getting an XLR cable. You feel like you're getting something substantial. And I notice a little bit, just it's hard to tell and hard to explain, but I feel just a little bit more higher quality with the cable and the cable is definitely really well made. I gotta admit. When it comes to connector, the only difference that I noticed between the Livewire one and this one is the fact that it's more well enforced at the connection between the wire and the connector itself. I feel like they really did a good job of streamlining that and making it so that it doesn't kink that easily. Now, one last thing, and the thing that really is a selling point for me, at least. The connection and the lock on the female end of the XLR cable is a nice, kind of easy to press kind of thing. And it's not as stiff. And it's the same thing on the live wire as well. Very nice build and kind of just easier on your fingers. Now, maybe I'm just being a little bit nitpicky and a little bit of a baby when it comes to XLR cables, but I just feel like it connects a lot better and it's really nice to pull on and off without worrying about breaking anything. And that goes a long way when you have very expensive microphones. If you have a Sennheiser MKH 416 like I do, I don't want to have a problem with the connector. So think about that. Now to recap on the more expensive ones. I'm going to give the Livewire an 8.5 out of 10 and the Mogami a 9.5 because I don't give 10 out of 10s. Here is where I only saw one person do this, and I'm sure other people have done this. Podcastage Banjo, he, he did a test of rejection of noise, meaning like signals from a phone or whatever it is. And we're going to do a little bit of an experiment with that and multiple types of microphones as well, dynamic condenser, cheaper, more expensive. So right now we have the rubber XLR cable, standard Amazon basic, that kind of stuff, with the AT4040. And this is what you're going to hear with quality of sound. And I didn't engage any switches. This is going to be all vanilla microphone standard regular curve. Okay, so now we have the braided cable, cheaper Amazon basic-ish. I don't know if these are actual Amazon basic, but they're cheap. XLR cables. All right, so now we have the live wire XLR cable plugged in, and this is starting to get into that higher tier of XLR cables. I really do notice a difference, especially when you get that really nice locking mechanism they have. It is a game changer when it comes to plugging things in and out, especially when you work with higher end equipment and you don't want to worry about breaking things off in your high end microphone with a cheap XLR cable. 
All right, so last but certainly not least, we have the Mogami plugged into the AT4040. A large diaphragm condenser microphone going into a very high-end XLR cable. So this is the perfect situation that you would have in a studio setting or whatever it may be. This is really nice to have. And if you notice anything as far as quality is concerned, let me know. All right, so next up, the Shure SM7B. No fet head added on. I have this recording at 65 healthy decibels. Holy crap. Uh, yeah, it's a very quiet microphone, obviously, and I'm recording into a 32-bit float file format. This is the braided cheaper option for your XLR cable going into the Shure SM7B. And it's one of those things that makes you think, where do you cut corners and do you have to cut corners? We have the live wire in right now and this is kind of like upper tier not crazy expensive but it is more expensive than your standard xlr cable uh when i got this xlr cable i really noticed that um especially when i compared it to the mogami you don't necessarily need to spend crazy amounts so now we have the mogami in the Sure, SM7B, almost forgot the microphone I'm speaking into. When you have so many microphones, you forget which one that you talk into sometimes. So now the next two microphones that we're going to test with these XLR cables are the budget options. Right now we're talking into the AT2020. And we're using the rubber budget option right now. And this is really just one of those things that you, you know where you started. I knew this was a starter kit that I had when I started out when I was using a Focusrite Scarlet Solo and making Let's Plays and stupid videos that nobody watched. But I'm not, I really don't care that nobody watched those because I gained so much personally. All right, so next, braided cable into the AT2020, into the Zoom F6. And the things that I want to point out when it comes to these cables are, n now that I'm actually using them like with a little bit more of a eagle eye and kind of like focusing in under a microscope, the things that I'm noticing, the locks are the major thing that stand out. All right, so now we're getting into a point where the XLR cable to microphone ratio is starting to tilt in one way, meaning that you're... <laughs> Your XLR cable is starting to get just as expensive as your microphone. This cable right here, the Livewire one, is I think about $30. I certainly notice a physical difference when it comes to the uh, Livewire and the Mogami compared to the budget ones, but that's hard to portray on a video. I can only tell you what I feel. So, with this XLR cable, this is probably overkill. Uh, this is definitely overkill when it comes to you using the AT2020. This is not something that you would invest in right away. Now, maybe later on, if you wanted to have a nice cable, like I said, the AT2020 will last you a very long time. But to justify spending three quarters of your microphone cost on an XLR cable is very difficult to do. It's just this. Just the way it is. All right, so the PD70... My favorite choice for the budget broadcast microphone uh, on the market today. And I've done a bunch of comparisons between this and a bunch of others. The pod mic being one of them. Uh, AT2040 now. And I did it against the AT2020. Uh, 2020 is not necessarily a broadcast microphone, but it certainly is a budget microphone. So uh, we're using the rubber option for the... Um, Budget XLR cable. I had a brain fart there. Uh, so one of the things that I want you to consider is this is another option as far as starting out. These things kind of blend together, meaning this doesn't outweigh this and vice versa. So yeah, I lost my train of thought. Uh, braided cable on the PD70. Let's go to more expensive options that uh, maybe with this configuration, I will notice that it doesn't really matter too much. Livewire XLR cable with the PD70 going into the Zoom F6. And let me know if you see a, or hear a difference in the quality. I noticed that it is ever so slightly 
a better feel with this type of locking mechanism on the PD-70 specifically with this flat edge. So anything with a flat back is probably not going to make a difference with like how, how it feels going in and out. Not to get too sexy on this channel. But uh, I definitely feel that with a stock or kind of like extra nubbin, I don't know what I'm going to call it, a separate housing for it, for your XLR port, it it just feels like, it feels bad. It feels just like it's going to break. Okay, so last test we're going to go because I'm tired, it's hot, it's sweaty. Mogami and the PD-70, I would not recommend doing this combination because it's not necessary. Spending $60 on a cable to put into a $130 microphone? Not advisable. Waste of money. So, yeah. Let's talk about how these tests went and how I perceived them throughout. Now, one more thing before we finish up and do an outro. Rode NT1. I finally got one. It was in a, it's a little scuffed up, but it's uh, in decent shape. It took me a, probably, I don't know, an hour to clean it up <laughs> properly. Uh, it wasn't in like clean shape, but it was in enough, so it was salvageable. A little nicks here and there, but I got it at a really good price, so I really couldn't pass up on it. A solo video and comparisons to boot, and uh, we will have uh, a lot of content, a lot of freaking content. Uh, based around this microphone and based around a bunch of comparisons. That all being said, thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. I know this is a bit of a obscure kind of topic with XLR cables and it's not something that's very, um, it's not a sexy topic, but it's something that I feel that I want to spread the knowledge that I've gained over the years and inform you guys. I mean, just like a microphone, XLR cables are just as important because they plug into the microphone. And just like recorders, they plug into the, re plug into the recorder. That's a tongue twister. This is definitely something you need to consider when buying microphones. And uh, my impressions, basically... Uh, ba what you need to do is understand where you're at, what gear you're using, and upgrade accordingly. Don't upgrade unless you're ready for it, and don't upgrade if you don't need to. Don't just blow money, extra money, on an XLR cable if you don't need it. So as I said, comments down in the comments section. You could ask me while I stream, ask me questions, hang out with me, whatever. Stop in for five minutes and whatever. Uh, if you're liking my vibe around here and you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and uh, put on the notification bell for notifications of when videos are coming out, streams that are coming up, and... Uh, I really do want to get back into streaming consistently. I'm sorry that I haven't been, if anybody's been looking forward to that. Uh, it's just been kind of crazy right now. Life has been just crazy. So I'm hoping to get back to one time on the weekend and one time during the week. But hopefully just once during the weekend I'd like to do. Once a week. That would be really nice to just chill, talk to you guys. If anyone shows up, I'd be happy to have a conversation. It doesn't have to be about gear. I'll, I'll be happy to have... A conversation and answer questions but a conversation would be cool too and until next time take care i'll see you in the next video cozy it's very very nice we used to love it back in the world back when the world was a little bit smaller no one will ever know that the u-boat ended up in the jungle <laughs>